All right. Hello, Sagittarius. How is everybody doing today? I hope that whether it's morning or evening, uh, everything's going well and you're ready for your forecast. We're going to be looking at uh, the energy of October, but a lot of the messages here at the very beginning hopefully will resonate for those of you that have joined, especially the channel messages. Um, so uh, let me talk a little bit about format and then we're going to get into this. I'm going to put Apollo down so I can get started. Um, again, my name is Nicholas Ashball. That was my little puppy, Apollo. Uh, we're going to be looking at um, several parts of your energy and opportunities for the next month. I begin with channeled messages. Channeled messages come to me as I meditate. I take some of the messages from dreams. I also use spirit totems, th things that I see in life or, or things that will be channeled and come to me. Um, so we'll begin with those. Then I'll move along to a Celtic cross where we take a look at the main opportunities in the month, whether they're challenges or blessings. We'll look at that. We break it down a little bit um, in the expanded forecast to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. Then we move along to some new stuff. I've, I've changed up the format a little bit this month. So if you haven't been watching, here's what's new. We'll then go into the blessings and blocks. So that is the big opportunity and the big challenge for the month. We'll do a viewer's choice poll as well as um, a soul path question or two, basically a reader's choice something that I think that we need to look at. Then uh, we will do a nice meditation that brings some healing and brings everything together. And I'll answer a final question that you might have. So all of that we'll do over the next um, hour or so. And uh, can't wait, all right? So by the way, time codes or timestamps usually will uh, be placed in the video by the end of the day. Summaries usually will be placed uh, about 48 hours later, just because I'm a one person company here. So I have to kind of do this all on my own. So thanks for patience. Sometimes I get people asking for that and it takes a day or so. Okay, let's get into it. Um, today, your uh, lovely spirit totem is the garden spider. If you fear spiders, you shouldn't, don't worry about it. And this is actually of all the spiders out there, a pretty friendly one. I did my research and it is not poisonous. The venom that it uses is only for things like gnats. So it's not going to bite you. It's not going to hurt you. Um, many of you may know it by the shape of its web here. I tried to pick one that was recognizable, like a zigzag sort of um, pattern. It has different names like the, the writer's spider or the zigzag spider because of that. Um, you know, I was reading up on it and even like scientists aren't completely sure why it makes those patterns. It could be for repairing the web. It could also be just to warn birds and other um, like airborne uh, animals to avoid it, like basically advertising there's a web here. Um, they can get pretty darn big. Here's here's a larger version of it where you can see the, the larger abdomen. And that's actually what I saw in my own neighborhood a couple of days ago and I was waiting to, to see when this spider would make sense. Um, and today I was like, oh yes, we gotta talk about the uh, yellow garden spider. So here you go, that's your totem. And I'm using <laughs> yellow pieces of paper here to talk about it. It's often found on tomatoes. Um, this is probably where a lot of you have seen it if you have a garden, um, but it could be on any shrub or tree. I was actually looking at it at nighttime. It was rebuilding its web and uh, beautiful, the way it was kind of, uh, kind of showing up against the street lamp uh, which they've just kind of made LED here. So it was this really bright web and I could see the spider there rebuilding everything. And um, it's very cool. It's beneficial and you actually want this to be in your garden. It gets rid of things like gnats, flies, aphids, which are especially uh, damaging to roses and different types of vegetables um, and other pests in your garden as well. As I said, it's known as the zigzag spider or the writing spider. Um, write, writing because it, it, there was this sort of like folklore that if you disturbed it, it would write your name in its web. Not really, it's just the zigzag stuff. And I think sometimes people would see a pattern or a letter in that, but that's all that's really about. Uh, each day, this is kind of interesting. I didn't know that the spiders actually consumed their webs, at least this type of spider does. I just thought that they clipped it and let it fall, but no, not the case. Each day, this spider actually consumes the silk that it builds um, in part because there's some small little insects and things, and there might be some nutritional value to that. But um, it, it basically eats all of the web that it's not gonna use and then rebuilds. So like the spider, each day is an energetic reset for us. We can begin again and we can really set the intentions again. The web is an indication of like this gigantic magnet spiritually, but it's also intentions and it's patience and it's manifestation. Every day that spider's manifesting, something's gonna come into this web and I'm gonna wait and I'm ready and it's coming. Um, and it just sits there <laughs> waiting for its meal to come through. So I really love the patience and the 
daily manifestation that this symbol represents for you and for me and for everyone that's listening. So every day is a reset. If you didn't catch what you were looking for today, you do it again, just like a fisher, uh, fisherman would do or whatever. So you have to basically reset, put the net out again and say today's a different day. Uh, so uh, you want to make sure that you're setting an intention each day as well. Um, if you're doing that, you're, you have a better opportunity of attracting what you're looking for. Uh, because of the web that is part of this totem as well, you don't want to get stuck in the past. That's why the, the spider literally says enough with yesterday and it chews it all up and it creates something new today. Um, avoid other people that are trying to get you in their webs. Uh, with the spider, it has this beautiful sort of light and dark energy. It has all of these powerful symbols, which we'll talk about in a second, but it also has some shadow energy. And one of the shadow energy pieces for a spider would be entrapment. So we wanna make sure that if there's someone in your life that is having a hard time dealing with their own stuff, that they're not pulling you into a web of drama <laughs> or whatever else it might be. So be aware of that and tiptoe around that and let them deal with their own stuff unless they're asking for help. And even then, you know, there are some people who are having a hard time integrating and listening and, and working on that. All right, let's get back into the kind of lighter energy and then I'll talk a little bit more about the warnings. Um, what I like about spiders is they represent listening and they are tuning into the vibrations and the frequencies on the web, right? So they're waiting to, to hear or to feel something. And, um, and it's not always a big sort of bombastic shake. It's a little tremor. So this is what's happening in your life with intuition and with signs and symbols. I believe that intuition and spirit often speaks in a whisper. When I say that, it's not literal. It's saying that the symbols that are coming forth are often smaller than you would think. And maybe the, the sort of way that it's communicating could be a persistent thought, a feeling, um, a gut instinct. So you want to be listening to the little things, not just expecting those big flashbulb moments to come through like, oh my goodness, this is it, an epiphany. Um, those little tiny things are steering you towards the right direction. You're trying to be picking up on those frequencies so you can find what you're trying to manifest in your cosmic web. Make time to listen. If you're too busy, if you're working too hard, if you're constantly just kind of in the same routine, uh, especially for those of you that are working and have kids, it's a lot, right? Because you're going to drop them off at school, then you're going to work all day, uh, then you're going to try to pick them up, then you're going to cook dinner, and maybe there's activities and stuff. By the time it's all done, you have maybe 10 minutes at the end of the day and you think, oh my God, I'm tired. I do want you to make some time though in that schedule to figure out where do I fit and how can I also make sure that I'm not losing myself in that web because you can get so wrapped up in that that again, uh, you become kind of like trapped in the web. So you need to find ways that you can navigate and make sure that there's not too much of everything going on. This can happen whether you have children or married or you're single. If you're single, the same thing can happen if you're working too much and too many schedules, too many activities, hanging out with friends too much, whatever. Make some time and space where you, even if it is that 10 or 15 minutes, where you can sit there and think, how am I feeling? Where am I at right now? This may be when you're taking a shower or a bath. It might be when you're taking a walk at lunch. Um, I remind people that like back when I had my day job at the, you know, at, at a corporate Place, I would make sure every day to, to at least take a 30 minute um, lunch break. I had an hour, but I would take 30 minutes of that at least to just go and get food or to take a walk to get out because I, I needed to not be in that space. And it felt so good to get the heart beating, to get some fresh air, to change the scenery. And, um, you know, I used to work by a place where there's some train tracks and stuff like that. So even just hearing that and things like that, it would kind of get me out of my headspace. I didn't feel like I was in the office. So kind of cool, like just little little movements like that, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour can reset you mentally. I would come back in the afternoon and feel a lot better. So make sure that you're taking time for that. And everybody can find 15 minutes in the day somewhere. If not, there's bigger problems. You need to figure out why you are kind of running on empty and, and what you can do to, um, to take care of yourself. If you don't listen, you're not gonna get messages. You're just going to be the Energizer Bunny, which eventually needs a change of batteries. <laughs> but you just keep going and going and going until you kind of like uh, stop. Uh, the batteries are discharged and you don't want to go there. All right. Let's talk about really some of the cool things that, that spiders symbolize. And these are things you can be focusing on. A reminder that we have a retrograde period starting around the 27th of this month um, in September, and it goes to um, October 17th. So right now you have about a week 
pre-shadow if you're watching live to set some of these things into motion. So do that. During the retrograde, you can follow through, you can revise, you can plan. And then after the retrograde, um, after the 17th, you can resume starting new things in your life. Okay, so spiders symbolize artistry, patience, and divine feminine energy. The artistry, because they're creating something constantly, they're constantly weaving, they're constantly spinning. Um, patience, because they sit there and they wait, they know it's coming, but they're gonna sit there and just constantly tune in. It's probably one of the most intuitive um, insects that I can think about. Uh, I, did, I didn't even get into their eyes and everything today. I really wanted to focus on the web and the manifestation of the web. Sometimes we talk about the eyes and everything, but today it's really about manifestation, web, tuning in. Um, and the divine feminine energy, all of the queen cards, basically, uh, it's your chance to, again, create, give birth, and, and, um, and attract. So I liked all of that. They also represent listening, which we talked about, engineering. We don't always talk about engineering here, but that's a good thing, this sort of building or, or architectural energy. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. This is a really good time to get started on creating things like that, not just on a sort of artistic front, but like big things in your life, construction. Um, persistence and renewal. Obviously, death and rebirth will be a part of it because of the web, uh, but Nonetheless, that's part of this. Now, the warnings with this, I'm just focusing on a few. Illusion, deception, cunning, and traps. It's basically a web is a big trap. <laughs> so I feel like this month you wanna be aware of things that could get you stuck. Let's talk about the good stuff first. Build something in your life that creates, kindles, rekindles joy, um, fascination, inspiration, passion. Uh, and I really want you to think of that last piece, which is what is your legacy? For those of you especially that are mid-career or maybe retired, this one will resonate hopefully a little bit more. Um, but what are you trying to leave behind when you're done in this lifetime? So I think of that, at, you know, again, kind of mid-career thinking of things. And I'm sure that when you're, you know, at the end as well, kind of after retirement, like taking care of grandchildren thing, you're trying to kind of figure out what do I want to be remembered by? So for some of the, like for those of you that are just in school, maybe just starting to begin your path, think about what you don't like in the world and how you wanna change it. What's the big effect that you wanna have in your living years? Um, for those of you, again, in the middle, take a check and think, how am I doing? What, what have I kind of decided as I've grown up that has changed me a little bit and changed my perspective of the world? What do I wish was done? And maybe like if there's a way that I can give back philanthropically or create something that can last after I'm not here and still see change happening, what will that be? And then uh, for all of us, what's the, what's the thumbprint that people will remember you by? Were you a great mom or grandma? Were you a great teacher? Were you a great doctor? Were you a good listener? Uh, did you make the world more beautiful through music and gardening or whatever? What's your legacy? It can be anything you want. It should be something positive and, um, and sort of that gives back in some way. Okay. When you're trying to figure out what you want to do, what the legacy will be, I would go to the things that bring you joy. Like I said, what is it that you, you get excited about? You have fun doing, uh, because if you don't have fun doing it, then you're not going to put as much energy into it. Don't do it because you're supposed to do it because you are inspired to. Um, there you go. All right. So spend some time again, building something hands on, so this can literally be constructing, this can be figuratively be sort of like creating or weaving something beautiful, but whatever it is, building this next six to eight weeks is about that. Don't let one setback stop you. Uh, obviously athletes don't, they, you know, if they don't win the medal the first time, they try again and again and again until they get to first place. A um, little bit of competition, healthy competition with yourself is probably good. Set some goals, keep keep striving. And again, if you don't make it the first time, you just keep trying. The spider re-spins its web every, every day or it repairs it. After something big is caught in it, it has to go in there, get its meal, and then clip it out and then spin it again. There's constantly building, rebuilding. It doesn't stop just because a rainstorm happens. It goes and hides in the tree and then it builds the web again. Very persistent, very effective, very powerful symbol. Uh, recognize patterns. We're looking at like the zigzag in the web um, tr and traps before they happen. Many of us know before we get into something that it's either a great or a not so great idea. So I think it's super important 
that um, it's, it's time for you to do this. And I did put ritual, and many of you are mentioning the full moon. So we'll pull this into our meditation today, the full moon. Um, usually on a full moon, it's about release. Um, rather than setting something new, a new moon would be good for new rituals. But I would say today, like releasing patterns and recognizing patterns, that's something that we can look at when we meditate a little bit later. But I know that um, invariably, many times when I've stepped into a situation that I thought I shouldn't, I always regret not listening to my intuition. So I encourage you to listen to your intuition, okay? Um, because of the color of this particular spider, um, yellow primarily, a little bit of gold, but so it's mostly third, a little bit of, um, I would say, I meant to say orange. So it's mostly yellow, but a little bit of orange. So I would say third and a little second, but mostly third chakra. Third chakra is uh, maternal and paternal energy in your life, mostly maternal. Um, it's your power base. Uh, it's where you're going to be dealing also with self-esteem and self-worth. So this is going to play a role in what kind of partner you're attracting, what kind of dynamics are happening in relationships at work and in friends, in your friend groups, I should say. And it's also gonna affect your pay um, and your how much money you're making and how many resources you're bringing in. Uh, so higher self-worth equals higher net worth. And we wanna try and bring that into balance this month for you. Okay, in dreams, there was a really interesting symbol that was coming through persistently. And um, I'm gonna, articulate it more than I could actually write because I would be writing nonstop if I was trying to put this all into words. But what I saw was a combination of kind of like what you might see as a puppet master, someone pulling strings, but the other piece was almost like programming as if you could go into someone's head and change the program. And, uh, and so to me, this is a very, um, it's a very interesting energy. I feel like there's uh, some crafty people that might be in the periphery for some of you right now. And it's interesting because of the upcoming retrograde. So I think what you might be able to recognize some of you is this sort of, it would be like high priestess or magician power, but reversed someone who's very cunning or manipulative or very convincing. But again, it, it ends up being this web or these there's strings attached. So it's conditional and it's kind of tricky. So you're going to recognize that because we got the solar plexus coming in, this would be someone with whom you probably already have a tug of war when it comes to um, using your voice, uh, being able to make decisions and, and be heard. Power struggles are coming through on this. So all I really put into the card was that sort of puppet master energy, someone pulling the strings. But where I saw it was behind you. It felt like there was like an attachment of energy around here and around here. So those are that, that's it's tricky when the energy is behind us because we're not as aware. So for those that are like working psychically, no, you know you, you should normally go in through the third eye. So I feel like there's someone who's trying to trying to get into your head space and understand how you think and then trying to work with that energy. So for this, you're tuning into my message. You're not going to fall for that. You're going to look at that and you're going to lead by example. You want to call out that behavior if it happens. Just say, hey, um, I'm on to what's going on here. This isn't going to work with me. Um, I think also you can just lead by example. Be bold, be honest, be concise, be direct. So if someone starts doing something tricky or shady, just say, stop it. You don't have to go into, you don't have to say what you saw. Just say, hey, I don't know what you're trying to do here, but it doesn't work for, with me. If you have something to say, let's chat. I'm here. We're, we can talk about this and I know we can resolve it. I care about you. I know you care about me. And I'm sure that this is just coming from a place of passion, but that doesn't work with me. So stop it. That's how I would handle it. Um, so less is more. You don't have to get into all the all the specifics. And um, and then the next thing that I saw was kind of like an old ship with the barnacles, all those sort of um, marine things that kind of hit your ride, if you will. But they're also kind of getting into the skin there. So I want you to shake off the barnacles for whatever reason, that was the visual, um, and get the residual energy from those people around you off of you. So for those of you that work in a difficult work environment, um, if it's been a challenging time in your family, if your neighbors are driving you nuts, whoever, we always have like one person in our life that kind of gets under our skin, that's the barnacle. And I just want you to shake it off or move it off, get that, get that energy off, dust it off of you. And have you ever noticed that people will change when they're around certain groups of people or like maybe you have this really wonderful, vibrant person in your life and they're surrounded by a bunch of negative people, give them enough time and they'll start to adopt some of the 
characteristics of those people. Get those barnacles off. So don't allow that to happen to you. Instead, you want to surround yourself with the sort of sunny energy so that you start to adopt that those habits. So this is a chance to really kind of meditate and see what's going on in my energy. What am I carrying on my back? Uh, and make sure that you can get rid of that. Okay. Um, again, I just recently rewatched re Labyrinth, which is a fun kids movie, but there was a scene where the the girl in that that movie was basically they were trying. There was this. Um, she was kind of in this junk heap, and these people were putting all this stuff on her back. Sometimes we get into a situation where coworkers, family members, will try to put their problems on us and keep us stuck. So you have to be aware of that stuff so that um, you don't get stuck. Basically, okay. Um, one last note, and then we'll get into the next portion of the reading. Because it's a web, because it's a spider, because it's a hunter, transformation is going to be a part of this, so death and rebirth. Um, so we'll be looking at cards, or I'll be looking for cards today, like the death card, like judgment, um, and either the world or the fool basically ends in beginnings. Um, you have to move. Stagnation isn't good. So if there's any part of your life where that stagnation is occurring, you have to kind of push yourself to get past that. As long as you're moving, changing, and growing, you are transforming, you are improving, you're getting onto that next level, okay? So uh, those are the messages that came through for the lovely garden spider. I think it's a powerful symbol. I really liked, let's just like one more time highlight this, artistry, patience, divine feminine creative energy, um, listening, engineering, and persistence. All of these things are great and renewal. You just want to avoid illusions or traps or deception or cunning. So there's a little bit of light, a little bit of shadow with this one. And because we have retrograde, that makes a lot of sense. Um, let me stack up these cards and talk about a couple of other um, points here before we get started. Um, if you enjoy what you see here, um, please hit the thumbs up or the subscribe button. I'm really close to a milestone. And once I hit um, 300,000 followers, I'll do a special video and I'll probably poll my members to see what they like. Um, I see that um, Sammy just gave back. If anybody else wants to uh, give a super sticker or a super chat, please feel free to do that. It helps me reset my cards, um, uh, like to buy new ones. And also I'm doing more videos now and it allows me to do that. At the very end, I'll make sure to um, express some gratitude to anybody that's done that. But if you'd like to show some love and support right now, you can do that by clicking on this little icon and um, feel free to do that. And later, there's also a thanks button that shows up on replay right by the share button. If you want to join and become a member, we have a bunch of folks here. I see Patrice right now. If you're a member, you actually get stickers, you get badges, and um, you also, or I should say um, emojis here, and then and badges, and then also a chance to vote twice. Plus, you can submit questions when I do my Q&A stuff. Um, one final thing, all of the cards that I've written out by hand, you can find on social media, and I've pinned that up above a link to that. So don't worry if you couldn't see all of that, just click up there, there's a social link. All right, let's let's um, let's get started here. We're gonna focus now on the uh, main messages coming through for today. Let me just pick the deck that I'm gonna be using and uh, let's begin. Hope everybody's doing well today, it's good to see you. All right, let me get started. This can be used for sun, rising, moon, Venus, any aspect of your chart that you happen to know. Um, and again, the next six to eight weeks. Lots of change coming through for you already. I can see that. If you haven't checked out my weekly forecast, you can go to the main page of my YouTube channel. And I just posted that for the next seven days. So um, feel free to take a look at that. There's some really good information on how to step into your power, which I think is appropriate since we saw um, the spider and the third chakra messages. So feel free to take a look at that if you would like. It's just called a collective reading. It'll be on my main page and it has the, the date span for this next week.
We love Ganesha. Great message coming through there. All right. All right, give me one second just to make sure all the settings are good here and then we're gonna get started. You got two totems here because that deck loves to kind of stick together sometimes, but I feel like that's uh, sometimes fortuitous. So uh, sometimes the more the barrier, right? Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. So um, the first card here is Agape. And this is this is a beautiful love sort of energy coming through, love from the highest form, right? And when I'm looking at this one as well, what I'm seeing here is um, all of these beautiful kind of representations, almost of the chakras as well, and kind of the cosmic web that we're talking about here. So what are your intentions? What's your connection right now to source as well? I think this is one of the things that you can be focusing on is how connected, um, how, how much you sort of believe in that connection as well. Um, the reason I mentioned this, because I was talking about the Energizer Bunny, for those of you that keep going and going and going, um, I think it's really important for you to realize that you are an active creator in your own story. You are the writer, you are the producer, you are the director. At any given moment, you can call cut or you can say, hey, we need to, we need to refilm this, we need to try something different. So this is reminding you to, um, to take charge, to take power, and to do so with love, do it because of love, right? So get connected, connect yourself back to source. Even if you don't believe, like I believe God is like kind of like a, a channel that can be broadcast in different frequencies. So that's what all the religions are basically are just different interpretations of the same source energy, which is why no one is better or worse than another. Um, so all you need to do is find your connection to the source. Um, that's the most important thing. You can plug in. If you're feeling depleted, plug in. That's why I want you to meditate, whether that's practicing yoga, going out and gardening, praying in some sort of a religious kind of uh, surroundings. It doesn't matter to me, but somehow plug in. That's important. All right. Then we have the sustainer. And to me, it almost looks like a big, um, like an ace of pentacles or something in the center here. The card is reversed. So many of you are doing the job of sustaining others. This is the um, maternal, like the, I would say the universal mother card as well. So if you're constantly giving and sustaining and providing, who's doing that for you? And are you also giving back to yourself? So the sustainer card also has to sustain itself and you also have to connect to source. I think as long as you do these two things, you're gonna be okay. Give yourself a chance to rest, to eat, to sleep, uh, to dream, to, to, to do fun things. Uh, and also make sure that you are doing things that charge you up. One of the things that we were talking about uh, on the collective on the weekend was I saw like a musical triangle, but the triangle also is fire, right? If um, I, th I think I had some people asking and I, here's a, here's a nice little representation of earth, air, water, fire. So fire, this is, this is you kind of, this is your chance to sort of get fired up about things, right? How can I get excited about what tomorrow brings, what I can do today? Um, I'm so excited, I can't wait to share this with you. I want you to, to fuel that fire, okay? So we'll pull a little bit from the collective into you, especially since fire is appropriate. Where's your fire? If it's not if it's not here, there needs to be a change right now, okay? Let's look at your center cards, which definitely have strings and webs um, attached to them as well. We have the Eight of Swords, and the Eight of Swords is reversed, and I kind of like it reversed because we see someone looking up and the blindfolds are gone. There's disbelief in this because sometimes when we take the blinders off, this is your traditional eight of swords here, if it were upright, but when it's reversed, it's actually positive. Love the light seers deck for that kind of interpretation. So we have an awakening happening for you. You're seeing something from a different perspective. You're looking at the other side of the looking glass or something. You're sort of finally seeing yourself for all that you have to offer, not as others see you, not um, as a projected fear or anything. So. I want you to trust what you're feeling. Remember what we said about the little frequencies, the little vibrations. You're waking up, you're seeing things clearly now. And if there's anything that scares you, education, um, information, support, get whatever you need to get past the fear. Because um, ignorance is a friend of fear. Um, and also I would say sometimes just, sometimes being afraid of, what's positive too. So sometimes we just, we don't know what will happen. So it's fear of the unknown. And unfortunately, that's part of life. We have to sort of like step into the unknown and just trust ourselves. That's where faith, that's where hope, that's where passion, and that's where intuition come in. 
as long as you lean on your your sort of other senses, you're going to be fine. <clears throat> so we have an eye opening sort of opportunity coming. And there's also people around you that may try to tempt you to go back into the blinders. So you're there and they're saying, how about this? Look at this. There, there's, <laughs> there is distraction around you. So I see you finding your focus and I see something here distracting you. It can be a person. It can be a habit. It could be, again, something that has, is sort of like taking your mind off what it needs to. Notice we kind of have like balance or the traditional almost like two of swords there at the center. But the important thing for your life right now is to find balance, to tune out any sort of distracting energies or, or voices and focus on what you finally kind of see and want to do right now. Okay. Super important. All right. It's time for some change. If it hasn't happened already, it sh you should be going through it shortly. Notice all of the butterfly symbols in this beautiful tower card. <laughs> We have a little squirrel here trying to make heads or tails out of what's going on with this lovely tree above them. Some of you are moving. Some of you have, have gotten from this sort of comfortable enclave and you have to get into something new. What's great is we actually see some resources right by the squirrel here saying you're going to be okay. Change in and of itself can be difficult, but it's necessary. So a change of job, work, or relationship status. Something that for some of you could have felt a little bit unexpected but once you go into it a little bit, you can see the blessing in it. So a blessing in disguise for sure, but a blessing nonetheless. It feels like you're going to come out of this period of change right on top of things. We have the King of Pentacles in the recent past. Um, you're also going to find out who you can trust. I'm looking at this uh, lovely dog here and, uh, and I see loyalty. I see, um, of course, Apollo is in the other room right now. Where's Apollo when you need him? Um, but yes, uh, basically you see loyalty, support. There could be a friend. There could be someone that you really love that's there that's saying, hey, I've got your back. So sometimes this is a clearing of the nonsense in our life, all of the people and all the distractions that are taking, up, um, taking us off that path. I really want you to focus on, this is also an architectural card because um, you have the resources there. So build, create, it's a card of house and home. Both the, the king and queen of pentacles are about feeling comfortable in your skin, in your environment with what's around you. So this is a really good time to improve your surroundings or to look for a new home. Um, some of you are rebuilding. Maybe you've lost and you're building again. Whatever you build will be stronger this time around. Even if it's not exactly what you want out of the gate, you're going from um, a clean and clear foundation into something much better. This is a big upgrade, okay? New job, new relationship, new opportunity after a period of loss and uncertainty. So for some of you, you've just been through it. You've been through a lot, but we see some really positive stuff here on the other side of the rainbow, okay? This is the gold at the end of the rainbow. And it's actually pretty much all positive from here on out. So the toughest part for many of you is right here, right now. Let's look just for a moment, look at the cards. Your, your most difficult or most challenging cards are here. Eight of Swords, Two of Swords, Tower. Everything else, King of Pentacles, Page of Wands, Magician, Two of Cups, hello, Strength, Queen of Wands, and the Wheel of Fortune. Couldn't ask for a better spread. So don't let this moment in time um, distract you. We are on the precipice of a retrograde. If you're watching this in the middle of the retrograde, it's going to make even more sense because that's what this is about, change. You have to make some changes over the course of the next month or so. But I like what's coming through. When you surrender to the energy of change, that's when growth happens. So something big, new house, new love, new relationship, new opportunity. Something also with loyalty, maybe meeting a new friend that you really can trust or a new love that you could really trust. A nice grounded earth sign could be coming into your life. All right, let's, uh, let's go to your headspace here, the crowning position, page of wands. Let's take an idea and run with it, literally. Uh, you can see this page of wands. It's kind of like a baton twirler. I love the illustration here. Uh, but you need to get into the energy of creation, out of stagnation, shaking off the barnacles, like we said earlier, and getting into taking that idea and moving it forward. Now, a page of wands is not necessarily as communicative uh, as a page of swords. They're more demonstrative, showing what they feel, showing the ideas, uh, using nonverbal, just like I'm using my hands here, using nonverbal language, um, eye contact, and walking the walk every day, leading by example. Also, they do a really good job of reading the room. So what you really want to do is make sure that you're picking up on how other people are interacting non-verbally with you, whether it's on a Zoom or it's you know face-to-face. -face. 
Are they engaged? Are they looking away? Do they look bored? Or do they look agitated? Slow down and listen. Definitely more listening with the page of wands, than, especially an upright one, than a page of swords, which tends to talk a little too much. So I feel like your listening skills and your interpretation skills will serve you very well this month. Make sure that other people are returning the same sort of gift. Uh, if you're not feeling seen or heard, make sure that you ask for that time and that space to, to, uh, to have that happen. All right, creative energy, really great card. There's nothing negative to say about the magician upright. Believe in your power, focus on something, see it through, spend time every day like the spider and uh, work on manifestation because that's what the magician can do. Maybe not as adept as the high priestess, but um, none, nonetheless very effective. And I love the magician because they can put, they can do anything that they put their mind to. It's the generalist magic card. Um, so basically a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and somehow it all works out. So you can use all your sort of different skills and create something special this month, okay? Uh, I saw myself, I have to remember a little bit, you, you should listen to the, the weekly, but I saw myself at the altar of the magician the other day. And let me see, I think what I was saying was, uh, you have to, oh yeah, it was about the tools. So yesterday I was mentioning to keep your tools sharp. So for some of you, it could be a refreshers course, right? Um, you may be deciding that it's been a while since I've done this and I wanna practice something, whatever it is. Um, so go back and get a, a refreshers course. Uh, so whether it's language or some software skill or something else, this is a chance to kind of sharpen the mental tool. Uh, for others of you, it's making sure that all of your other, like if you're a painter, you, do you have all, is the paint dry? Do you have enough uh, types of brushes if you clean them out? For those of you that are, you know, maybe in, in construction, making sure that you have all of the tools that you need. Investing in some of those things would make sense actually, taking some of your resources and putting it into the tools of the trade um, because this is an artisan card. The magician creates and it has a little bit of everything in front of it, but you need to make sure that the tools are up to date, clean and uncluttered. Uh, always a clear mind is necessary to have a really effective magician card. If it's distracted, if it's um, if it doesn't have what it needs, then it's kind of like uh, off balance. So let's give the magician everything he or she needs to, to move into the next possibility. People are interested in you, Sagittarius. We like this. We have the two of cups here in your soul card um, representing what's coming through for you, what people want, what, what opportunities are there. We've got like two of cups is fantastic for the soul space here. So I think for many of you, the question is, are you ready to partner up? Are you ready to um, surrender to the to the to some of the, the love and the, um, the affection or the opportunity that's coming through? More can be done together than apart, and you have a chance to also reconcile. So if there's been uh, some sort of a tension between mother and child or between siblings or between anybody in your life, this is a chance to go back and um, to, to heal a little bit. And I think that's important, particularly because you want to be able to use your power on other things, not in sort of like this tug of war. It's definitely a good time for love if you're interested in love. Okay, we'll talk more about that in a second, but I like the Two of Cups. It's attractive, it's a partnership card, it's a balanced card, it's upright. So if you're ready to receive, the universe is ready to give, okay? People really are perceiving you in a new light and they're seeing hidden strengths. What we see, what I'm seeing with this is a question from the universe. Do you wanna lead, do you wanna follow? We have the lamb, which is gonna follow. We have this strong divine feminine energy here with the, the lion or the tiger that's coming through that's saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm the leader, I'm, I'm the king or the queen. So what are you, what are you ready to do? I also like that this is showing us the balance between feminine and masculine, um, which is something that I think is super important. So as a leader, you should be kind and also strong and direct. There's doesn't make you more or less of a, a man or a woman to have both energies, it makes you better actually. So let's get in touch with our opposite sort of trajectory or more fluid, whatever you want. But what we see here is a leader that is not afraid to be themselves. The whole purpose of the Sunday, the Sunday collective was um, the star power, the star energy. So be yourself, that singular energy is gonna bring you strength. People see you as a really great companion, a really great leader. Just decide, what do you wanna do? Um, what I also like about this is there's no domination. Strength cards always are interesting in, uh, to see how the artist interpret, uh, interprets it um, because a lot of times the interpretation will be, you know, pulling the mouth open like we saw with Rider Waite Smith. Um, different decks will show different animals. Sometimes there's a crocodile or whatever. Sometimes they're very peaceful. 
This one's a very peaceful energy. I think it's even peaceful in the Afro goddess one. I like the peaceful ones because I don't feel like we should have to have that domination or the struggle because that's what I saw in the, in the dream was someone trying to manipulate, trying to throw their voice in your, in your throat or trying to kind of put their hands behind your, your mouth and make it move. So we don't want that. Um, so you lead by example. And if anyone tries to do that, stand up for yourself and say, no, I'm, I'm the sort of lioness here that you see. Um, I'm strong. I, I can handle this. All right. Cause you can, and you will, you might also have, a really great Leo in your environment that is interested in you. <laughs> um, so that could be coming through. We have earth signs, we have Leo. There's a lot of kind of great energy. You actually don't have any lack of interest this month, I would say, because we have page of wands, king of pentacles, queen of wands, the strength card, which could be a Leo, a lot of cool energy around you. So decide what you want, right? My favorite, well, I don't know if I can take a favorite, but I, th I kind of think she is my favorite queen, um, the queen of wands. She typically has really cool illustrations, um, but she's the ma she's the magician kind of like graduated because she can make anything happen. We actually see her with her wand here. Um, and usually she's in a desolate environment, but there's growth and abundance around her. So you can take something like the tower and create the abundance that you would see here in the King of Pentacles because you are very good at organizing things because you're very good at um, basically wrapping your head around stuff. And this is this is you, this is you personified this month, really. Great management energy, um, great sort of passion and fire. Again, going back to the triangle that I was picking up on in yesterday's collective. So stoking and kind of like kindling that fire to, to create something really wonderful in your life. And we even see her doing that here. She's got that flame, that passion. Now, Queen of Wands, what is she good at? Project management, direction, um, decision-making. Sometimes easier to do it for others than oneself. And for many of you, that's the challenge this month. Can you see it for you? Can you do it for yourself? You can if you're doing it for others. So that's the encouragement is to kind of like own, own the power, own the decisiveness and uh, take it from there. Change of fortune is what we see in the outcome here with the Wheel of Fortune. Um, it's just the wheel in this particular deck. But what's kind of cool is we see chips that you would see at a casino that she's sort of sitting on top of, like Vegas chips or any casino. Uh, and then we see the lucky dice there at the center. So for many of you, you have to take this sort of calculated risk, but it looks like a good calculated risk. Just make sure you've done your homework and you have a support net beneath you, a little web to, to take care of you if you need it. So. I think a leap of faith is good. I think it's much better when you know that you can brush yourself off if it doesn't go exactly as planned. So just have a contingency plan in place. And when you're ready, I see that many of you are ready to go out on your own, perhaps. This is very entrepreneurial. This is very entrepreneurial. So is this. And this is effective when paired with all those entrepreneurial cards. So you can absolutely make it work. So change in finance, asking for more. If you're not getting enough support, love, money, um, titles off, whatever it is, this is a chance to stand up for yourself. Absolutely. All right. Let's go ahead and expand the forecast now. We're going to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. And um, in this portion, we're going to kind of look at everything in a different light, and I'll pull some cards up as needed to, um, to basically reframe some things. Unlike some other readers, I choose to not read solely from the frame of love because there's a lot more going on, including who you are. So we want to work on soul development as well. All right. Uh, let's look at uh, mind, body, and spirit, which is health. And it says loved in loved one in heaven. Thank you for, okay. So this is basically ancestral energy coming through for you. Um, so it says, thank you loved ones in heaven for drawing me close at this time. For those of you like me that are clairvoyant, um, you may be picking up on ancestral energy. It can also be not just this lifetime, but your sort of like lineage, your ancestral lineage coming through to help you out as well. So if you want, call on the help of a past aunt, uncle, um, grandfather, grandmother, parent, etc. They're there. They're, they're ready to help you. The veil is going to be very thin around October 31st. So it's not just Halloween. We have like All Saints Day, All Souls Day, Day of the Dead. Um, it's a very powerful time and we'll do a special meditation. I believe it falls on a Sunday fortuitously. So we'll do a very special reading on um, Halloween. I always do something on Halloween um, because 
it's not just a spooky holiday. It's actually a really powerful moment to connect with ancestral energy. So if you lost anybody in your life, this is a chance to mend and to remember and to celebrate their legacy and to remind them that they're not forgotten and to let it go a little bit then. When we do that, it helps us make peace with, with things. So if you have to say something, speak to them. They're listening. Every day towards Halloween, it's going to get more and more um, easier to communicate and to create some healing, okay? And then after that, you can let go a little bit and kind of refocus on your life. I think it's good that that, I think the Day of the Dead is a really cool holiday for that reason. It's really about celebrating the ancestors and making peace with that. And um, I'm sure they enjoy it as well. All right, let's look at some other things here that we want to focus on with health. It's time to make a change. If you are ready to do something different, start a new routine, um, just get better with, with your health, with your diet, with your exercise, whatever, make the change now. Because I feel like the wake up call is, is knocking with this. So this was ignoring it. This is ignoring it. The tower's coming through. Maybe it's because you know you had a doctor's appointment, you didn't like what you heard, or maybe there's something else. You don't feel good about the, the environment that you're living or working in. And you're like, I don't want to be in this relationship with this job anymore. Whatever it is, something needs to be healthier and sort of rebuilt. You're going to be happy that you did that. Okay. This card can sometimes be, um, it can come through when we treat ourselves too much. So um, everything in moderation, the, the king of pentacles is not, he's, he's very generously drawn here. Um, usually the, he has a little bit too much of everything, too much food, too much drink, et cetera. So moderation is key. All right. Um, let me see if there's anything else that we want to be focusing on. I think these are the main things here is just focusing on creating a positive change. This has to do with chemistry or chemicals in your life. So um, sometimes the magician card can indicate um, interactions between supplements or drugs or whatever. So just do a quick audit, work with your doctor, work with your nutritionist and make sure that you're getting a balanced diet and that there's no interactions between things that you're taking. Um, sometimes if the doctors don't talk, things like that can happen as well. All right, let's look at wealth. Standard disclaimer applies. Always work with your doctor on this stuff before making any changes. All right, for wealth, which is depending on which point in your life, it can read differently. So I'll look at the different life points here, but we have earth and ground, earth and ground yourself. We see that with the King of Pentacles as well. So for those of you in school or just beginning your career, again, knowing what you're trying to do, where you're headed is going to be so much more effective uh, for you, especially if you're in school, because you can start to um, build complementary skill sets. It's not just about your main major. It's also the little things that you need. I think nowadays, everybody should be taking some business classes because there's a lot of entrepreneurial stuff going on. So you need to understand finances and small business, you know, sort of all the minutia that's involved with creating a business. So a little bit of business can help everyone. Communication can help everyone. Um, and psychology can help everyone because these are things that we kind of need in everyday life. Understanding people, understanding money, and understanding business. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and communication. Get, get those sort of requisite skills, make sure that you're kind of building something up but earth uh, grounding yourself is key. If you're really busy right now and mid-career, I think this is about reminding yourself why you started and that if you're on track that you can handle the challenges in the, the road right now. Uh, and if not, then to get back to what you were supposed to be doing. How did you get off path? What can you do to get back into the sort of um, the, the trajectory that you want? And for those of you that are retired, it's a great time to get outside to earthing and grounding. This is sort of doing things in nature. Um, and then also maybe doing something where you're seeing a tangible return on whatever is happening. So it's not just sort of a symbolic thing. Maybe you can see something happening as you do it. You might need something kind of like data-based, like I, I just made a difference because this, this, and this happened. So looking at a return across the board, I think would be good. Um, when it comes to money, I definitely see the ability to re negotiate, renegotiate, or get more. Um, because of the third chakra spider energy that came through, some of you may have been selling yourself short, underestimating, or undervaluing yourself. So this is a chance to um, even out the bars there. Good news, new opportunities can come from best friends or family. So if you're looking for a new job, reach out to people that you know. If the job you want doesn't exist, make it. Again, entrepreneurial energy, if your budget allows. You may need an investor or, or something like that to make this happen. So get the business plan together, figure that piece out. Overall, I like what I see. No matter what you decide to do this month, you have the power to create positive change, okay?
love. We have Ganesha here coming through. Let me just put my glasses on for the smaller text. It says, in infinite abundance, obstacles are being removed, spiritual support and connections are increasing. Okay, amen to all of that. Ganesha helps us when we have difficulties in our life. Um, so if there's someone driving you nuts, <laughs> this is a really good card to come through. Lord Ganesha is saying, um, you have the strength, you have the power to do it. And this time around, you don't have to, you don't have to argue, you don't have to show it, you don't have to kind of like, all you have to do is demonstrate, hold your ground and um, decide if it's worth your time and energy. But you should be able to find a way to communicate or to, to navigate the challenges. And if I'm, let's gonna, we're gonna look at it now in three different aspects. We'll start for those of you that are in a relationship, then I'll look at those of you that are looking for love and those that are single and happy. If you're in a relationship, the number one challenge, it's smack dab in the center is, I don't feel seen, I don't feel heard. Do you see me the way I want you to see me? I see you, do you see me? All of that basically, or you're not listening to me or you're ignoring, one or both of you could be ignoring something that needs to be dealt with. The sooner you get to that, the better, because if you don't, it's gonna happen anyway. Um, so either get ahead of the tower or you're gonna have to ride the energy of the tower and work through the changes. Some changes have to be made. The relationship um, is a little rocky for some of you, but it's going to turn around because we have the magician, the two of cups, um, and also the wheel of fortune, a change in direction, a change of fortune. So I feel like you can totally sort it out, but you have to be able to listen and to see each other, okay? And no domination, like people taking turns, like equal safe sort of space for one another, I think is super important. Um, Let's take a look, let me see if there's anything else. For some of you, there's a, a really big move on the horizon like job, and this could also create tension in the relationship because we have the King of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune, and then that sort of tower card. So for some of you, there's a, a choice or a decision. Should, you know, I wanna move for this, do you wanna move with me? Or is our relationship enough to deal with maybe you making more money or the, the other person making more money? So there's some issues around money and career that are um, at the core of some existing relationships right now. If you're looking for love right now, sort yourself out first, get settled. So whether it's getting healthy, finding a new home, getting that new job, whatever, you've just started to pay attention to some things that really matter in your life, don't let that go. I also feel like it's a little challenging because you have a lot to do right now. Um, you have a lot of leadership opportunities and a lot of manifestation opportunities in front of you. So it will be challenging to find time in your schedule. But if you find it, it's really beneficial. Um, whether you're in love or looking for love, the two of cups is great. It's telling me that there's definitely a chance for love, for partnership, um, for some fun. It's, it's great energy. So uh, I think it's a little easier if you are looking for love than if you're in love, because if you're in love, there's some challenges. But if you're looking for love, it's time, mostly time and work that's going to take you away from that as well. But you, you have a little bit more freedom because it's the beginning of something new rather than um, sometimes when you're in a relationship for a while, you get on each other's nerves. So you're going to have to try to find, no matter what, if you're in a relationship, find the spark and get back to why you're together. And if you are just starting to meet someone, remember how cool this period of time is. You don't want to kind of like miss out on it. Make time for yourself. Remember what I said earlier, especially if that person is giving you that sort of passion that you've been missing in your life. Um, so looks good. I would say again, possibly a really strong Leo coming in. Um, what I see here is some pretty evenly matched energy. Um, this can represent you. This can represent the other person. I like when I see a king and a queen. I like the queen of wands. She's basically a king. Um, so very strong energy here. I think the grounded energy and the sort of in your head energy between the two is gonna be the challenge here because one person seems very comfortable in their skin. The other one has to show it, has to, needs a little bit more validation. So that could be a little challenge for some of you. If you're single and happy, good for you. Um, the number one thing that I'm seeing this month as a potential outcome is a change in fortune. I feel like you have really attractive energy and you should be focusing on pulling in new partnerships this month, work partnerships in particular. Uh, can love come through? Absolutely, even, even especially because you're not looking for it, but you can be using this energy to really um, be productive, uh, to be profitable, and to clear out some stuff that you've needed to do for a while. So it's a very productive month for those of you that are single and happy. Things are gonna start to go fast. We have the cheetah here in the destiny card, which is your trajectory. Um, the sooner you start to take action uh, or get some clarity on things, the faster it starts to happen. So I feel really optimistic about how quickly 
things will come to fruition or show up in your life. This is like a three of wands, basically. Almost once you've decided to, to do it, you start to see a, an indication that you're on the right path. So we like that. Um, the cheetah also is telling us that there's some sprints of activity coming through, which I talked about um, last week when I was reading for a different sign. So you were gonna have moments where you have to sprint like the cheetah. You're gonna have other moments where you lie in wait like the, the spider or the cheetah. It's not a constant race. So start, stop, start, stop. It won't be a steady sort of long distance run for you. So pace yourself, rest, and when the moment is right, go for it. Both the spider and the cheetah are hunters and they're good hunters at that. So you want to, uh, to, to embrace that. I also like the little, um, the, like the polka dots on this, all the little, it's not stripes, but it's the spots, the spots on the cheetah. So just like a peacock, you want to be really comfortable with who you are, comfortable in your skin. So please find that comfort this month. That would be the other thing. All right. That's the main uh, forecast. Let's look at the big idea, and then we're going to go into blessings and blocks. The big idea is a change for the positive. We have a change in fortune and a change in direction. Uh, the thing that's going to help you through that is the magician energy and the leadership energy that came through in the Queen of Wands and the Strength card. So trust yourself and make the change that you need to. No matter what you're doing this month, you're not alone. Okay, that's the big idea. And definitely there's room for love and relationships this month, whether or not you want it. And friendships, like friendships as well. Make time for that because that's showing up with you. feels like that's a, a core tenant for this month as well. All right, um, let's go ahead now and move into the blessings and blocks for the week ahead. So we'll start with a blessing. The blessing is something that you should love. That's great. It could be a blessing in disguise. Because of Mercury retrograde, it seems invariably the last three or four signs it's been a disguised blessing. So don't be surprised if that happens. Um, but sometimes it's obvious, sometimes not so much. So let's look at what the blessing is and then we'll look at the block. All right, blessing for um, the next six to eight weeks, specifically October. We have the Knight of Wands. It's an upright, not so hidden blessing. I like this. This Knight of Wands is one of my favorite illustrations um, because she's uh, basically creating her own rhythm, her own beat. And we see that wild steed in the background kind of dancing to the beat of the same rhythm, which I love. So find your own rhythm, find your own voice, and don't feel like you have to dance to somebody else's music. This is, this is you creating. This is you getting back into the sort of the energy of agape, which I was talking about with the channel, well, not with the channel, but with the catalyst. So. Um, take this idea, the page, and let's amplify it, bring it to the next portion here and actually start to see some action happening. What's cool about this, um, if you look closely, one, two, three, four, she's smack dab in the center of the four of wands. It's a knight and it's, it's a court card, but we actually have the court card in the middle of the four of wands. And we have something in the background interested, like that horse is going to be what you can ride to the next sort of um, location. So you have an opportunity incoming, a partnership incoming, um, something that you can hitch onto and get a little extra energy. So I see some really good energy on the horizon as long as you stay authentic to yourself, hold space for partnerships and um, love and love what you're doing. It's all about passion, this card. And if you look close at the drum, you can even just see the fire coming out of the drum. Great illustration, okay? Let's take a look at um, the next card, which will be the block. Um, and the block is not gonna be a block because you're here, but what we're gonna look at is what you can avoid, the potential block. Um, so because you showed up, you won't be blocked, but it's trying, this is the universe, trying to get in there and say, don't do this. All right, so the potential block is the sort of malaise that comes through with the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups, Look, she's at the end of the rainbow. There's pro probably like this little pot of gold here. She's focusing on all the stuff that hasn't happened versus what is right there. Four of Cups is always the universe trying to help you see something from a different perspective. It's a blessing, but you're missing that blessing, so a hidden blessing. So if you've been rejected, if you've missed something, if you just discovered something, whatever it is, if you're a little late to the, to the uh, party, you're still at the party and someone is still interested in connecting with you. So wake up, look around you, um, tune in because there's always a lack of tuning with the Four of Cups and, and also kind of look at the unexpected. You can't keep doing the same old, same old. The tower came through saying this doesn't work anymore. So things are better than you think and 
Things with other people may not be as good as they're projecting. The grass is not always greener on the other side. The grass may be perfectly you know, uh, green where you're at and you just can't see it because of perspective. So um, I stretched that metaphor, but you know what I'm talking about. Make sure that you are um, expressing gratitude and that you are present in the moment, okay? So before I get into the next portion, which is gonna be um, Soul Path, I'm gonna type up a, a viewer's choice right now. The viewer's choice is a chance for you to um, basically pick something that I'm gonna talk about. So let's look real quick. We're gonna do viewer's choice, uh, and I'm gonna pick about three things that I think might be worth looking at. So um, I think as a reader, I wanna look at the tower. So I'm gonna save that for myself. Um, I think for you though, the, the magician card is really cool. So let's take a look at um, what to focus on manifesting because I think that's important. Um, when I look at the Two of Cups, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out there an opportunity for you to have me look at partnerships. Um, partnerships and like, what's, what's the message? And as the final one, um, taking care of yourself, because we have the Sustainer card reverse. So um, I'll put that here. You're gonna have a choice to vote on this in just a second as soon as I type. Um, so how to take better care of um, myself. Okay. So here's your viewer's choice poll. While I'm looking at the next question or two, you'll have a chance to vote. It'll be at the top of the comments section. You can only do it on a mobile device or on the web. You won't be able to do this if you're watching me on, a, um, on TV. All right. So let's take a look at my question that I wanted to look at the uh, soul path question, which is the tower. Is there anything you need to know about the change uh, at hand? And then I'm gonna also look at the wheel of fortune while you're voting so we can see the change of fortune. So let's look at the change first, the requisite change in your life for viewers, uh, for, um, <laughs> sorry, for soul path. So what is the change that you need? Why are we looking at the tower? What's this about? All right, six of pentacles. You have some choices to make. The Six of Pentacles is basically saying, I can do whatever I want, but I have to say yes to some things and no to some things. I can't feed every open hand, every mouth around me. Some people I'll also have to work at um, not being so dependent, not so codependent. So what you're gonna do is say, uh, yes, no, next week, maybe. Basically set your priorities. Um, the Six of Pentacles allows you to do most of what you wanna do, the timing, however, may not be exactly what you want. So um, you always have choices when it's resource allocation with respect to the scope, how much do you want to do and how quickly. Uh, you have timing and deadlines. How, you know, is it is it now or is it later? And then you just have a, a basic yes, no ability with this too. Like this doesn't fit uh, your brand. It doesn't fit your vision. It doesn't feel right. So you can say yes, no, or later but you have to say some of these things and people are looking for you to decide. So decide um, who you want to invest in and, and what you want to invest in. And that change of focus is going to give you more. So you have to, you have to change up a little bit your allocation of resources. Okay. And I saw a comment there about no. Both no and yes are equally powerful. And, uh, and yes, you can just say one word, either yes or no, and it has a lot of impact. Say it with meaning. Don't say yes or no. Say yes, no. <laughs> Be powerful. We got to pull the, the uh, um, solar plexus into speech. So that's also something to remember when you're talking, because if you just kind of talk like this, people are like, what are you mumbling about? Speak from the diaphragm. Um, hold yourself up upright when you're doing it and put some put some verve, some energy into what you're saying. It has a big impact. Um, someday, maybe I'll go back and look at some of my very first videos, which don't even exist here on YouTube anymore, but I was very quiet at the beginning because you're finding your voice sometimes. So we all go through that, but find your voice. It's going to be important. All right. Uh, I want to look at the Wheel of Fortune, the Change of Fortune. Hierophant. All right. So for many of you, organization and structure may actually be your friend. There might be someone who is um, 
is ready to take you on as a mentor, a mentee, you, uh, and they, they'll mentor you. Um, so this is going to be your chance to kind of work with somebody, partner with someone, an experienced person. This is also recognizing that, hey, I have the power to lead and organize as well. It's the queen of wands graduating up and becoming the higher fence. So definitely strong energy here of leadership for you. So are you ready to leave? Because you have plenty of cards showing that capacity and that ability. So the sooner you're able to do that, the better. All right, let's end the poll and take a look. It looks like what to focus on in manifestation is gonna be the winner, but I'm gonna end the poll now. We'll take a look and see um, if indeed that is what won. I'll shuffle while we're doing this. Thank you to everybody that voted. I appreciate that. Put on my glasses so I can read what the poll says. All right, so by a pretty large margin, we got 47% of you that voted of the 110 votes that said, I want to, you want to know what to focus on with manifestation. All right, so we're gonna do that. What to focus on with the magician, with manifestation. All right, so we have the Six of Cups. Love, love, love this card for you. Um, so Six of Cups, uh, some of you are, you have a really high bar of excellence for the partner that you wanna bring into your life. Um, so the Six of Cups to me, for those of you that are seeking out love, some of you, I, I see relationships kind of was in second, uh, or no, maybe it was in, was it? Yeah, um, partnerships. So what I would say with this is you're manifesting a really high level of partnership. It came through anyway. So Six of Cups would be a deep soul connection. Um, I don't really use the word soulmate that much. Let's just say like divine partnership or uh, a starmate, if you will, someone that's of a high frequency. Um, so I like that. It may take a little bit longer if you're waiting for Six of Cups. You can go out in the world and find an Ace of Cup anywhere <laughs> or a Two of Cups anywhere. Uh, super easy, but to find Six of Cups or Three of Cups. One, two, and three, they're almost everywhere. But the, but the uh, Six of Cups is a, a hard thing to come by. It's a best friend, it's a lover. It's sort of a, a symbolic brother-sister energy when you meet someone and you're such good friends that you feel like your family. So many of you are calling in a deep connection and I like that. Some of you wanna start a family. Um, so for those of you that wanna start a family, looks like it's a good time if that's something that you're interested in. Um, this is also about reconnecting with the past and nurturing that inner child. In this particular card, we literally see the younger and the older version of this guy. So um, this is a chance for you to fix something or celebrate something that was lacking from the past, to do something that your, your family didn't give you a chance to do, okay? So you should be manifesting a childhood dream. Some of you might be manifesting a chosen family or an actual family birthing something. And the rest of you might be calling in a really high friendship or partnership in your life. So it's relationships, even though it didn't win, it kind of came through in, the, in this uh, main card. It's all about the people. Makes sense, got the two of cups here. I have to say uh, for you this month, it's looking really good for partnering up, for connecting with people, for healing things. So um, love with a capital L is definitely coming through for everybody this month, your sign particularly. All right, so that is the, the message here. And yeah, this could be the legacy for the family too. So great, great idea on that, whoever just said that. All right, so let's go ahead and focus on the meditation. And then I will take a look at um, the final card. The final card is something you can think about for a moment while I'm getting organized here. Um, if there's something that I didn't answer, maybe there's a direct question about an interview that you're going on or a potential place that you want to you know, move or whatever, think about it. Hold it in your head for a second or two uh, or a minute or two. And then after we do the meditation, I'll pull an extra card and answer that question. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to do so yet, um, I'd encourage you to hit the thumbs up and to subscribe. I know sometimes this gets served up by chance to you, and this might be your first chance to, uh, to be here. So if it is your first time here, please consider hitting thumbs up um, and subscribing. Like I said, I'm pretty close to a milestone and I would love to be able to do that video real soon. So thumbs up or subscribe. This is the same as following, even though it's called subscribe and you can opt into notifications with the bell. Thank you to everybody that's so far given back. If you uh, have done that, I'll say thank you at the very end of the video. I just try not to interrupt the flow. And also special thanks to all of you that are channel members, everyone in chat that has a green sort of name and all the special emojis. Couldn't do this without you. If any of you want to join, you can actually click the, the little dollar sign and there'll be a join, but, uh, op uh, a join option. And then there's also just a join button that gives you membership perks. 
Okay, let's get into the meditation and then we'll answer the final part of the final word. So for today, let's use the moon. It's a full moon. Full moons are great for allowing things to leave, things to kind of fall away from our lives. So I mentioned earlier that there was that sort of an, uh, that the barnacles that might you might be holding on from people in your life and you're tired of this. Let's allow the moon to show us what we are, what we need and what we don't need. And um, I really love the reflective energy too of the Eight of Swords here. So I'm gonna imagine that we're looking at the moon in a pool of water like this or in a little pond. And you're looking at your reflection, you're seeing the moon behind it. And I want you to imagine that as you look at yourself, you can see all the pieces of your life. You can see the, the pieces from your mom, from your dad, from your ancestors. You can see the pieces from your higher self, from your soul. You can see the attachments as well. Imagine that you could magically put your hand into the water and if there's any attachments, you could just pull them off, the, like those little strings, you could snap them off. And you can keep doing this, you can keep touching your reflection. Uh, you don't even have to pull them, you could just touch them with your finger and see those connections disappear. So that all that's existing now is the reflection of you and the beautiful moon behind you. Imagine that the moon is placed perfectly behind your head, creating this halo or this nimbus of light, just like you would see in a church, wherever you see some of those beautiful stained glass pictures. All right, so as I play this um, singing bowl here, I would like you to focus on um, seeing that beautiful glow around your head space continue to grow until there's a beautiful auric field, this beautiful circle of light around you, all right? This is the true you, unencumbered by the fear, unencumbered by the attachments, um, untethered to any one place, space, or time. Take a deep breath, let the energy grow, think about the question you have for me, and we'll look at it afterwards. You're gonna hear in the background the sound of things breaking, they're doing some construction. I think it's really appropriate for what we just did. Um, if there's any parts of you that you need to like let go of, see them now completely gone, feel the sense of freedom and levity when there's no longer that attachment or that anchor that's been holding you down. And just like you know the plaster that's breaking or the glass that's breaking in the background, sometimes we have to go through, there's literally some tower energy behind me. Um, so. As you go into the month ahead, you'll be working with a similar sort of deconstruction, reconstruction, just like the spider web. Um, it's okay, that's part of life. Sometimes it's messy, sometimes it's dusty, sometimes it's noisy. Whatever it is, we can work through it, you can work through it. Carry the energy of this full moon with you. The full moon tonight especially is going to grant you dreams that could be out of this world. I want you to pay attention to how they feel, uh, what you're perceiving in them, because it's a, it's a symbol of, um, it, it's going to help you see the illusions, right? So the spider web can sometimes be about illusions and this is your chance to see through those and see past that, all right? It's also divine feminine energy. Really good time for you to nurture yourself and take care of yourself. Hey, Apollo. Uh, we'll pull Apollo up at the end, he just woke up. All right, let's take a look now at your final card. And your final card is whatever question you have for me. So focus on it. For each of you, it'll be different. You don't have to type it out, just kind of think about it. If you wanna share later, you can. But for now, let's just hold that question in your mind and in your heart, and I'm gonna pull a single card to answer what it might be. Okay, everybody's favorite, the hanged man. The hanged man's been coming up uh, quite a bit, actually, uh, over the course of the 
collective reading and past couple readings I've seen this. Um, so the hanged man for you is indicating a necessary period of pause, but with that we get the enlightenment. And this is almost right what we were talking about in the meditation where you could see that beautiful nimbus of light behind you. Um, so I feel like there's this beautiful moment of enlightenment happening. Um, so slow down. For those of you that are like the Energizer Bunny doing a ton of stuff, slow down and really take a moment to listen to the messages, to listen to the signs and to figure out what it is that you want. I'm gonna clarify the hanged man just a little bit. Um, as a yes, no, this is a not yet, clearly. You have to wait. But let's just see if there's a reason for that pause that I haven't already picked up on. So I'm gonna have a final two cards just because sometimes I clarify. Um, okay, so there, there's two things with this. First of all, not to overthink that there is this sort of moment of pause and to ground yourself again in the bigger vision, the bigger opportunity, okay? Um, so some of you may have just um, lost, lost focus on, we talked about this earlier, what the big picture is. This is a chance for you to regroup. So sometimes slowing down is a, a, a wonderful gift. Be I mean, we went through this collectively last year with uh, COVID. It gave us a chance to think, how do I feel about this relationship? How do I feel about this job? How do I feel about this life path? Um, let it co go through you like a channel. You shouldn't have to hold on to that thought too much. A lot of Leo energy coming through, a lot of loyalty energy coming through as well with some of this. Oh my goodness, with all the glass in the background. So some of you will be breaking through new things, clearly with the sounds that we hear behind me as well, and um, allow this to be uh, a cool opportunity for breaking new ground, okay? So let's take a look right now. And I wanna say, first of all, thank you for everybody that uh, showed up today. I appreciate you. Let me just give you a list of some of my upcoming dates here. So I will be back again later this week. Um, there's a schedule. I'm gonna be back on Thursday and Friday looking at, uh, let's see, Capricorn and Aquarius are next. I'll have the collective on Sunday and Pisces next Monday. And then we'll restart on Thursday and Friday the following week with the next month. I can't believe how far we're in this year already. We're in the final quarter of the year. Um, let me take a moment now to say thank you to everybody that was able to give back right now. So I'm gonna welcome new channel members and I'm gonna say thanks to anybody that gave some contributions. Um, I think that before I started today, I saw a new channel members. So let's see, um, it was someone who rejoined. So Angel Angelic Unity, thank you for rejoining if you hear this. And I'd like to say thank you to those of you that were able to give back today. Um, you make all this possible. Um, we have a nice amount today to too. Thank you so much. All right, so I'll start at the uh, beginning here. Amber, I appreciate your contribution. Latoya, Tashay B336, thank you so much, Tashay. You're here almost every day and I see you and I appreciate you. Um, Sammy K, Melanie Green, Diva Kiva, cool name. Ella V, uh, Skittles, <laughs> Sun Miley, Stella Morris, Lindsay McGuire, 62 and Sunny, and Miss Baxter, Mrs. Baxter, thank you so much, everybody, for showing up. And um, anybody who I missed or who uh, gives back a little bit later, I appreciate this. And I do look at all the comments and look at all the contributions. Um, thank you so much. I will be probably putting up something in the next week or so for all the channel members. Um, thank you, Stella Morris, as well, um, to ask what you want me to do in the, in the um, 300K sort of celebration video that I'll do. So I'll probably throw in an extra one. And thank you, Agnes, as well. All right, everybody, much love and light to all of you. You have an exciting month ahead. There's a lot of changes, but it's a change of fortune and an opportunity to grow. So it's change for the better. Let's pull up Apollo. He's just to the side here. Hey, buddy. Want to say goodbye to everybody? All right, so Apollo is going to help us sign off, <laughs> hoping that your day is fantastic, that your month ahead is fantastic as well. Um, thank you very much for spending some time with me. Uh, appreciation to my moderator, Maria Margarita, for helping keep this a nice, uh, uh, wonderful experience for all of us as well. Uh, so I'll see you later this week, everyone. Love you. Again, catch the collective reading if you haven't already. It's live on the channel. I just did it yesterday. It'll give you a forecast for the week ahead. All right, have a great day. Much love and light. Take care. Bye-bye.